Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Today I am painting again in the morning. Early in the morning, I'm waking up at 6 a.m., getting out before the sun rises. And I'm on the far, far edge of the Eastern time zone here, just before Central time zone picks up. So it's still dark at 6 a.m. And so by the time I'm getting set up and ready to paint at like 6.30, the sun is just starting to come up and things are really dark still. And also, today is the very first time I'm actually painting the Sleeping Bear Dunes looking north and not painting Empire Bluffs. I think I've been favoring Empire Bluffs. I think it's just a little bit more attractive looking to me as I'm looking at these dunes. But today I'm painting Sleeping Bear Dunes looking north from Empire Beach early in the morning. So let's get to it. Let's paint. All right, so I am out early in the morning again today it is the painting for thursday and i got out to the beach sometime you know 6 30 6 45 in the morning and i was really fighting the wind this morning you can just totally see from the angle i actually ended up having to set my camera up at a sharper angle than i would have liked Sorry about that. It's almost like at a straight 45 degree angle on the painting. So the painting might look a little strange, but I think you can get used to it and still watch the painting happen. But it was so windy out there. And the whole time I was freaking out that everything was just going to blow over. And I'm set up on the beach. I am on Empire Beach looking north and today I'm actually painting Sleeping Bear Dunes. I think it's the first time this week that I'm actually painting Sleeping Bear Dunes and not painting Empire Bluffs. So I am just really fighting the wind through this whole painting, but it was doable. I felt like, you know what, I can make this happen. I can do this. And so I just went for it and trusted that I could make it happen. A lot of times you might uh, notice too, in a lot of other paintings, I usually will tone the canvas with a sort of orangey brown color at the beginning of the painting. And honestly, I do it for a few reasons. One is just because I've sort of always done it and a lot of painters have always done this, just painted on a warm ground and When you're painting in the summer or when you're painting landscapes, a lot of times it's really nice to have a warm ground because it lends itself to giving a sort of effect of warmth, of uh, warm sunlight hitting the surface. But um, I don't know why I did it today. I probably was just an autopilot. It was more of a stormy morning, like rain clouds were hovering not far away the whole time. I probably should have toned it a little bit more of a neutral color, something that was a little bit more of a gray. But that's okay. It doesn't, like, make the painting impossible to make. It just maybe makes the mixtures a little bit more difficult to see through the whole painting process. So if you have a sort of gray day and you start with more of a neutral grayish, maybe a 50% gray. Maybe it's a little bit of a cooler gray, maybe warmer gray. It depends on the quality of the the sky and the quality of light that's coming down on you on any given weather condition or light condition, depending on the day and where you're painting. Um, if, if it's an overcast day, you probably usually want to have a more neutral ground underneath the whole painting that's happening, especially if you're doing a single layer painting, something like what I'm doing, more of an oil sketch rather than like a layered up painting. A single layer painting, one shot painting, premier coup. I usually like to tone the canvas so I'm not fighting the white of the canvas the whole time. So I have something a little bit more as a mid-tone or maybe a little bit brighter than a mid-tone value as an entire ground for the painting from the get-go. And for me, it helps actually see the overall value structure of the image as I'm painting. So for instance, as I'm keying in the sky and I start blocking in the shape of the sky in the composition, the landscape below already is keyed a little bit darker. It has a darker value than the sky. And so it makes it easier to anticipate what 
values need to happen next. And so it functions in that kind of a practical way. But it also functions in that other way of kind of creating an overall warmth or coolness to the painting from the get-go and helps you keep things in order as you're mixing colors. So today's painting is a little bit different with the sky because I'm investing a little more energy into painting the sky. I mean, the sky is still really simple. I didn't do anything crazy complicated in the sky. But I really wanted to create the effect of that stormy morning. And it's super windy. The sky is darker. It kind of has a gray, violety cast. There were a few clouds that started out in the morning as I was there, you know, 6.45 a.m. As it was getting close to like 7.15, that big violet cloud that I sort of have painted in the majority of the sky, it got really dark and a darker gray. The underside of the cloud was getting a pretty intense shadow. And I was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to get rained on. But luckily, somehow the rain held off the whole time I was there and I was able to make the painting. Still fighting the wind like crazy, but I was still able to make the painting. The thing that's just so challenging when you're painting in the wind is that like I said the other day, you can't really hold your brushes like you normally would hold them. You can't hold them as naturally and gingerly or uh, loosely, however you want to say it. You can't hold the brushes just with a loose grip and have a nice steady stance. One, because the wind is literally kind of blowing you. It's like somebody sort of just slightly pushing you in the back the whole time. And so you almost always have to have your finger or something braced a little bit to have a steadiness. And it's not anything to do with um, not being able to relax and just have a steady brush stroke on the surface. It's actually because the wind is like pushing you the whole time and it keeps throwing off your center of balance. And that little bit of push that moves your body forward, maybe a quarter or three quarters of an inch, whatever it is, as subtle as that is, will really make you screw up in your brushwork as you're painting. So I spent a lot more time keying in the sky in this painting, and as I'm painting the hillside, as it's coming towards us, I'm really taking my time to carefully capture the specific quality of the atmospheric perspective this morning. One, because this view, I could see really far north. Like, that little sliver of dune that has some sand exposed was really far north from me. I don't know exactly how far north, but it was part of Sleeping Bear Dunes proper, I guess you could say. Like, the dunes that you go out to and has this lookout on it. And then the dune that has the tree cover on it. That dune, I think, is where there is a scenic overlook drive that was unfortunately closed while we were here, so we weren't able to take the drive up there and look out from the top of the dune out over Lake Michigan. But apparently it's a nice view. It might not be the most like scenic view because you're really kind of just looking at the horizon. You look down and you just see Lake Michigan and you look up and you see the sky. So it's kind of like a really simple view that you probably have, but apparently it's really worth it. So. We didn't get to see that view, and it's okay. I, I had an awesome time just being on the beach, looking at the dunes from the distance like this. And like I said, I'm really taking my time mixing these trees off in the distance because I want to have that atmospheric perspective really keyed in properly. So those greens of the trees that were really far away, really on the palette, looked almost just blue, like a kind of grayish blue color. So as the trees are getting closer, I'm introducing a little bit more of that local color of the trees as they get closer and they're becoming a little less of that bluish gray and green is coming into the mixture a little bit more and more and the value is getting a little darker and darker as they come forward. And then there's this sort of mound that is closer to me. It's really like a, a rounded hilltop kind of shape. 
And that was quite a bit darker than everything else as that hillside and the dunes are traveling off towards the horizon, going away from me. But this was fun to paint because As I was looking north, there was all these little hints of the sand at the base of the dunes making these kind of little triangle notches along the shoreline as it's coming towards me. And those notches got larger and larger too as they were coming towards me. And they had a nice sort of organic, unpredictable rhythm and it was fun finding where those would be placed and checking that vertical alignment of those shapes with the silhouette of the tree line above. So that has to do with just drawing with the paint and really observing what you're looking at and not just throwing down the sort of idea of what's in front of you, but actually looking at the specific shape and size and position of all of those little sand triangles as they're sliding up into the dune at the base of the dune. So I actually spent quite a bit of time on that part of the painting, this tree line as it was going off into the distance and trying to really nail that atmospheric perspective carefully as it's going away. Another thing that was uh, interesting about the greenery and the greens in this painting was how dull and how desaturated a lot of this grass was. I felt like it was almost the same color as the sand on my palette. There was just a little shift of saturation towards the green from the sand mixture. But the color of the mass of that uh, dune grass really was sandy colored. It didn't have a very vibrant green color. And I almost felt like I was overshooting it and then having to pull back and then maybe introduce a little bit more into it and go back and forth with it. So that was kind of an interesting challenge in this, trying to figure that out. But one thing I really love about this landscape up here is these mini little dune cliffs where the dune grass holds the structure of the sand dune, the base of the sand dune, or like as it's getting close to the beach itself. There's these little cliffs and they're like, you know, three to six foot in height. And They have this nice visual quality to them. I really love how they look. The sand gets a little darker. You see some of the exposed roots of that sand grass. And um, in this case, as the light is kind of... The light was sort of coming from the right side of me, from the right side of the composition in the painting. But it was such a stormy morning that it was just really coming straight down. But those little cliffs, whatever you want to call them, they get a little bit less light and they create a nice dimension to the landscape and they're also just beautiful as you're walking along the beach they're a really elegant feature to a michigan beach and i think something that is very specific to a michigan beach like if i compare it to beaches up in new england those beaches have a lot more rocks there's not as much of that kind of dune structure present on a lot of those beaches. I think one reason because the wind is coming from the mainland and going out to the ocean on the east coast. So you don't get these kind of dune structures as much unless there's a little kind of like inlet or a bay that's sort of creating a little mini western coastline that actually creates the opportunity for sand dunes to build up. But the whole coastline along the eastern side of Lake Michigan, which is the western side of the state of Michigan, you get these beautiful dunes along the entire way. Some of them are small, and some of them are really large. For example, here in Sleeping Bear Dunes, these are massive dunes that are... They're not very easily climbable if you're (laughs) not in awesome shape and willing to spend a couple hours climbing the dune in the sand. But you get all these really gorgeous cliff sides and dunes and even just like these sort of sand hills all along the Michigan coastline. It's such a beautiful body of water. Honestly, if you've never been to Lake Michigan, I think it's one of the best bodies of water just in general. Like I love Lake Michigan so much more than the East Coast Ocean. Like the Atlantic Ocean just it does not even compare in my opinion to the western side of Lake Michigan. 
for one, it's not salt water. So it's really easy to swim in. You don't get salty water in your eyes and you still get really big waves. There was literally a mini hurricane on Lake Michigan a couple years back. So, um, yes, it is a lake, but people don't realize how large this lake is. If you've never been to it, so many people assume that they're going to be able to see to the other side of Lake Michigan when they come up to visit it. But there's not a chance anywhere on Lake Michigan that you can see across it. It's really massive. And the waves that you get are really large at times. And there's a really dangerous rip current. Like tons of people, unfortunately, die on Lake Michigan all the time. Like throughout the summer months, it's just unfortunately really common. And I think people unfortunately underestimate the power of the waves at Lake Michigan. They think, oh, it's a lake. It's just this great lake, whatever. It's fine. But those riptides, the rip currents, those are super dangerous. And they can really suck you under, and it's scary. So, but back to the painting. I was really happy in the difference of the quality of light today. I loved the color of the water this morning. It was just so different. Really pale, almost tan colored aqua, like an aqua tone, but tan. It was like the color of the sand almost with a sort of aqua colored filter over it really beautiful color of the water this morning and I loved as I was looking north on the shoreline the pattern and the rhythm of the waves was making this really nice short diagonal crest of the waves these little sort of lighter patches of water where the wave was crashing over and I was able to see enough of them and kind of see the perspective of the waves as they were coming in on the shoreline So that was really beautiful, but man, fighting the wind this morning was insane. It was a really difficult painting to make because of the wind. So I think that was pretty obvious just in the shakiness of the footage today. And you could see the dune grass and the trees in the background of the shot just sort of going crazy the whole time that I was making this painting. So that was today's painting, Thursday's painting, and it was a blast. I was cold at the end. My hand was starting to get really tight. I ended up having to touch this painting up a little bit because I realized how tight my hand was getting just from the cold and the intensity of the wind. But I was able to embrace the process and come out with a decent painting. And it was awesome. I was super happy to be out there and really just experience the force of the weather pattern this morning and how different of an experience it was than the other paintings this week, even though I'm in the same place. So I hope you all have an awesome day. I will see you all tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.